I'm super excited today. Someone that I've been admiring for the last couple of years. He's actually Phil Allison from Bell Property in Hunters Hill. And you've just won the prestigious award of Domain Rising Star. So Phil, firstly, from me to you, buddy, congratulations on that amazing achievement, mate. Um, Thank you, mate. I know the blood, the sweat, the tears that you've done. And I thought for our viewers today, we're gonna to do a two part video. First part, I really just wanna, for you to give people a taste of your journey of what's taken you to become the rising star of Domain. Yep, yep. And the second bit is, a lot of agents are thinking about building a team around them and there's a lot of trends around super teams and mm -hmm. you know when do you make that that initial leap and you know take that jump into you know starting a team so I really want to focus on that second part of the video with you today so let's go back to where it all started for you Phil um, let's hear it you know where'd you start why did you get into real estate and, and what's the last you know few years been like for you yeah cool um, so I started when I was 19 yeah I started at the front desk as a receptionist. And um, from there, my first real job as a real estate agent or in a team yep. was um, for a company at Hunters Hill. Yes. And I worked for an agent there who, she'd been doing a bit of business for a while, but not a great amount of business. Right. Yep. And that was, I was so fortunate now that I look at it to have started with someone like that. Yeah. Because it, it forced me to help grow her business by finding new ways to prospect, yeah. by bettering myself. And there was great leadership from her, but me being her first employee forced or pushed me to try and find things for myself as well, yeah. externally from the team and, and from the company. Okay. Yep. Um, so that was a really good lesson. And in the two years that I was with her, yes. we grew her business threefold in the really? first year. Yeah, it was, it was huge. So tell us some of the activities and actions that you would have been doing in those first couple of years working under her. So I'm, I'm gathering like your role would have been, as we call it today, what, sales associate? Is that what it, it was yeah, the title? Yeah, sales associate, Lead generator. business development manager. Yeah. Okay, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, beautiful. So, so yeah. yeah, so at the time, a lot of what I did was cold prospecting. Right. A lot of it. So we didn't have a massive database when we started. Yes. So majority of the work that I was doing was cold calling. Yep and door knocking. Right. And that was all to grow a database and, right. and grow a business. Yeah, yeah. And how many hours would you have been doing in that time? Like, <laughs> you know, you were there. Um, <laughs> we've, got, we've got a shoe here to prove yeah. it. And there's a bit of a story to this shoe. We're gonna talk about it in a second. Yeah, I'll explain. <laughs> but no, you were there and you were helping us. Like, you were our coach at the time, so yeah. you saw. But majority of my day was either, or half my day was on the phones. Mm. So I would either be at our desk or I would set myself up in the meeting room yeah. and I'd just be on the phones yep. or I'd be out door knocking in the afternoon. So right. I remember at the time the company was tracking how many calls people were making and, yeah. and um, trying to work out the results and those sort of things. And I think at the time I was doing 2,000 um, dials a month. Wow. 2,000 dials. Yeah, yeah. But from that, I would track my own numbers as well because I yeah. wanted to know how many people I was speaking to and then how many MAs I was getting from that and how many emails I was getting. Yeah. Um, and we used to speak about that a lot, bringing or working out what we were getting conversion. from the activity. Because all conversion. the money's made in the conversion, right? Absolutely. And I remember um, you know, each month there'd be a daily accountability where the whole group of the group that you were working for at the time under this leading agent, they would say the ranking of all the people who do the calls, right? Like That's from 3,000, yeah. 2,000, et cetera, right? Yeah. But like you said, you said you needed to know if you're going to improve and get better at the level of influence or persuasion on the phone, which is a skill, right? Yep, yep. It's a skill. You need to know your numbers, yeah? Absolutely. And then you started working out your numbers. And I remember, like, in the beginning, your numbers could have been somewhere between 80 to 100, you know, connections to one appointment. But then over time, you became confident, you became competent, and your numbers started to really come down, right? It was like mm. something, if I remember, something like 15 to one appointment, connections to one appointment, and then you even got better than that, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. you just got better and better as, as you did this, correct? Yeah, absolutely. That was, that, we had a, we called it a tracker, a prospecting tracker. Yep. And that was the biggest blessing I could have ever stumbled across or you could have given me at the time because it allowed me to track what I was doing, which I could see growth, yes. which excited me. And then yeah. it became more about, or a, a part of it became, I just want to get better at this. Yeah. Like, I just want to move this number down to here and get more from it. Yeah. So that got me excited to actually see the growth. Yes. But what it did as well was when you're in the prospecting room or when you're at your desk and you're making calls, Yes. It can feel like very quickly. It can feel like you've been doing it for hours, and you've been calling all these people, and you don't. You feel like you're not getting anything from it, and you get a bit disheartened. And 
That happened, and then yeah. I would look down at my sheet, and it would smack me in the face because I thought, I've only spoken with 15 people. Yeah. Like, how can I be ready to get up now and give up when I've only actually spoken with 15 people? Yeah. And that pushed me to keep going because I knew that my average at the time was every eight calls, I would get an appraisal. Yeah. So if I had an innate, I knew I was close. Yeah. So yeah. It, it kept me going. Yeah, it kept yeah, me going. Yeah, yeah. And we still use that in our business today, but not just with cold calling. We use that now with every part of our business. So wow. we can get excited about growth in every area. Yes. And it keeps us accountable and it keeps us on track because if we look down at the numbers, the numbers don't lie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. One thing I've learned from you and, and, and maybe you can share with our viewers today, something about you know mental toughness. Um, and I talk about this mental toughness bit because you know guys like yourself um, that just do the calls, do the door knocks every day, okay? Um, there's a level of character that gets built, correct, mm, with that mm. mental toughness. And I say to people like, you, you're doing the work that sucks, you know what I mean? Like door knocking sucks, right? <laughs> Cold calling sucks, right? Like let's be honest, yeah, yeah? yeah, okay? But you've got to go out there and do that stuff every day, yeah? You've got to go, and one thing I learned from you and, and is that you went out there every day and got your face punched. And you didn't mind getting your face punched every day, right? To get to where you are today. Yeah. Tell some of the people why you go and build that mental toughness because it's easy for a lot of people just to give up, right? But doing the work that sucks, right? Getting your face punched every day is not great, but you actually, you know, for you it was like, what was it building for you? What was that doing for you? Interesting. Um, when I look back at it, when I look back at it, I'd love yep. to say, oh, I just enjoyed prospecting. That was my thing. I just loved it. But it yeah. wasn't so much that. Yeah. There were two things. The first thing was I, I knew that I wanted to do real estate and yep. I knew I was going to be very good at it. Yep. I just knew. So I was committed to this. Mm. Like there wasn't any option for me. I just knew this is what I want to do and I was going to make it happen. Yep. Like that was number one. Number two was I, I without meaning to, I painted a vision in my head of, of how the next couple of years were going to go or where I was going to be in five years. And now that I look back at it, it was when I was out there door knocking or when I was out there cold calling, like I was actually thinking about in five years time, that's where this is going to take me. And I didn't mean to do that, but I always had this vision in my head. Yeah. I even had the vision of being somewhere like here in five years time, talking to someone like you yes. about how hard it was and how I was prepared to push through and break through those barriers yep. to get success in this so that I could show other people it was possible as well. Yeah, if yeah. I can do it, anyone can do yeah. it. I'm not special by any means. Yeah. So those were the things that kept me and allowed me to push through. Yes. I think the message would be work out what's going to drive you or work yeah. out what's really important to you yep. and just keep that very close to you because yeah, yeah. that will get you through the cold calls, that will get you through the door knocks. Yeah. That'll get you through the door knocking in the rain, all that sort of yeah. stuff. It's funny you say that, Phil, because you know I work with hundreds of agents and, and, and guys like yourself that do the door knocks and you know the cold calling in the beginning, just doing that work that sucks in the beginning. But one thing I've noticed is they're able to tap into the intuition. And one of the things about the intuition is you see yourself at a higher level than you currently mm. are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And definitely. when you sort of get stuck or you're feeling like you're not making progress, you look at that intuition of yourself and going, well, that's where I'm going to be. Yeah. And I could, I don't know if you ever saw this wonderful video by Matthew McConaughey. He was actually doing the acceptance yeah, speech at the Oscars. Yeah. And he says, you've got to look forward of, of, of who you want to be. Yeah. And he goes, when I was 15, I was seeing myself at 25. When I was 25, I was seeing myself at 35. When I was yeah. 35, I was seeing myself at 45. Someone yeah. asked him, who do you look up to? Or who's your idol? Who do you look yeah. up to the most? And he said, me in 10 years time. Like that was his answer yeah. to that. Yeah. So when I look back at it, the door knocking, the cold calling, I was actually thinking, I'm like, this is just a part of my story. Yes. This is just where I am right now in my story. Yes. It was, it, I knew it was just for a moment. Yep. And I knew if I just pushed through and broke through this, like the rest of the story is really beautiful and yeah. we're creating that now. Yeah. But that's what I was able to do at the time. So there's heaps of advice I could give people about door knocking and cold calling and all this sort of stuff. But really that was the biggest thing that 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 pushed me through yeah know your vision have clarity why you're doing it that's so important right definitely and 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 be bigger than yourself because that's where you want to get to correct yeah absolutely how, how exciting is that absolutely. now now phil we, we we didn't see a bit of the shoe before um tell us the story about this shoe because this is quite sentimental to you right yeah this, this, so <laughs> definitely. share the story with our with our wonderful viewers here i will, I will. so when i when I was at my company, uh, the initial company, I went out on my own as an agent and everyone was saying I was too young at the time and I wasn't ready. 
Um, but I was adamant, not just to prove them wrong, but to prove myself right, yep. that I could do it. And at my first company, where I went out on my own, I didn't do much in the first nine months. There was heaps of activity. I was doing 40 MAs a month, I was out there, but I only sold two properties in the first nine months. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a decision. I had to leave that company, and I had to go start somewhere else that yep. was gonna be an advantage for me at where I was at in my stage of business. Yes. I won't go into too much detail about that. But I took the, I made the hard decision to go leave there. And at the time, before I left, the number one agent in Australia at the time worked in our office. He was awarded by the Real Estate Institute. And he told me, or he offered me a job at the time to work for him. Wow. And I'll never forget, I didn't even, I was, I was grateful and I really look up to him and I was grateful that he offered it to me but I didn't for a second even think about taking that job. Yeah. Because that wasn't part of my vision. Yes. So I left that company and I went out to another one who wasn't doing much in the area, but I thought would be a good fit for me. Yeah. And it was at that company where I made the decision that I'm all in. Like, I'm going to make this happen no matter what it takes. And I like... Burn the boats. <laughs> you were going. That, that's, that's what this was. So yeah. I always, even when I didn't have much money, I always managed to buy nice shoes. Always. Like, <laughs> Look at the way you dress. Always. <laughs> I don't know how. I always found the way to buy nice shoes. Now you got standards, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was at this other company, for the first six months, we didn't get any sales. And we yeah. were door knocking every day. My brother and I, we both started there together. My younger brother, Chris. And I'd door knock one side of the street, Chris would door knock the other side of the street, and we'd get to lunchtime, and we'd go home, we'd change our shirts, because we were sweating so much through the shirts, mm. and we'd go back out in the afternoon. So I had these nice shoes, what but I, I kept wearing through the leather soles. <laughs> so I'd spend like 300 bucks, that would last a couple weeks, and I'd be yeah. going back to buy new ones. And I was at this store that I always go to where they sell nice shoes, and I saw this one, and I looked at it, and the guy goes, if you want a shoe that's gonna last, get this one, because it's rubber. And I looked at this shoe, I'm like, this is the ugliest shoe I've ever seen. Like, I would not, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't wear this I think my, shoe. My grandfather wears that. So no, just kidding. I, <laughs> I would not, not wear that. <laughs> I won't tell you what Chris called them, but anyways. So, I bought, I bought this shoe. I bought this shoe because, not for the first time in my career, but I didn't care how I, didn't care how I looked. Yeah. I knew I just needed to speak to more people to make my story come to life, to yes. make it happen. So the reason I keep this is because it's a reminder for me that it was a moment where I, I made a commitment to my story that I was going to make this happen and nothing was more important. Mm -hmm. Not how I looked or not the shoes on my feet that I used to care about. Like It was just what can I do to speak to more people and this was it and I made the decision. So I keep this with me because it's a reminder of just like being all in. And, and yeah. hard work too, because that's yeah. what it takes. Yeah, just to remind you to keep you, you know, steady and yeah. on track. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Mate, that's amazing. It smells a bit, but it's all good. <laughs> you must have done a lot of walking in those shoes. Okay, finally, as we finish this part one of this video, yeah. um, Domain Rising Star of 2017. Yeah. All that hard work, struggle, challenges, obstacle, what does that mean for you? Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and I feel like it wasn't just myself who won that award, but it was my team as well. Yeah. Um, and our environment at the moment. So that, you know, I feel like our team won that. But it meant two things for me, the Rising Star uh, Award. It was a recognition that we were on the right track. Yeah. Because we are trying to bring new things to the industry. We're trying to change it for the better. And yeah. we're trying to be at the forefront of innovation and all those sorts of things so yeah, right. it was great to see that we were on or were on the right track yes and i feel like it's just the start yeah. of, of what's to come yeah yeah um, yeah but you're building something yeah, yeah. absolutely and i yeah I, I knew i just felt like it was going to happen for us yeah like i felt like it was the right time and we we're the right people for it but the other part of that award that was so important was the domain rising star provided me with a platform to be here right now and to be able to talk to people like young people in the industry yeah. because I want to share my story I want to let them know what it was actually like to do this yeah. you know I want to show them and, and explain to them like the hard work that went into it and I want to explain to them that if you care about other people 
yeah. and you care about the people in your team yes. more than you do about yourself, yes. then business comes easy to you. Mm -hmm. And that's the message that I want to spread to the industry. Awesome. So the Domain Rising Star provided me with that platform to be able to say that. And yeah. I did say that at the awards day, at, at the speech. So Amazing. That, that's a message that I want to send out and, and I really want to speak to as many young people in the industry as I possibly can yeah. to spread that message but then to help them and tell them my story on, on how we got here as well. Absolutely and I, and I think they're going to be grateful to hear your story because there are so many young people that are looking up to people like you and I think you have something special out there to give Phil and I know they're going to go a long way once they hear and watch this but also to get in contact with you and see how they can do it. Oh, because if I'd you can do it, they can do it, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So speaking of leadership, we've got part two coming up. So you better get ready and we'll see you next week for part two about leadership and when to start a team.